<laughs> hey everyone and welcome to my morning download with Sonia. We're going to be discussing how to build your personal brand on LinkedIn and kind of share some quick wins, some quick tips to help you guys build and create your own strong brand. And to be a morning download, I have my porridge, so don't mind me. Sonia, would you like to say well gone? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Being a morning download, I also have my cup of tea, so that's great. Um, so my name is Sonia Barlow. I am an entrepreneur, TEDx speaker and diversity advocate. I have started a social enterprise and not-for-profit called Like-Minded Females, aka LMF Network CIC, which is very much a tool um, and a community to enable people to achieve their most professional and personal best self and success. And one of our main focus areas is personal branding, especially focusing on LinkedIn. We want to enable and create opportunities for women and underrepresented individuals in tech, business, entrepreneurship, um, and really help them to level up their confidence and, and their inclusivity. Mm. And often the questions we get are all around personal branding and LinkedIn. And so, you know, I, I just think it's a little bit overwhelming that people just don't see the power and they just don't see how great it can be for you and your business. Um, and alongside that, I do public speaking, coaching and consultancy. So everything. Great. <laughs> little bit. Little bit. So any, any way that I can get paid to talk is basically my life's goal right now. Sonia and I used to work together at our previous organisation. And she used to talk a lot then. And she's been talking a lot ever since. Um, but See, but I don't actually think I talk that much, but... I get told otherwise so it is what it is we've come a long way so you know my last employment was our last full-time job and will yeah. be our last full-time you know like typical nine to five and it's funny because I've seen you grow so much as an individual since you left like your environment really can make or break you I think working in a toxic environment can really be quite negative and have a negative impact on your motivation on your success on who you are as a person you know eight hours a day outside of the house sorry not even outside of the house like in another organization adds a large impact on your life and if you don't enjoy your job or your colleagues or you know what have you it really is going to drain you so it's so important that you find what's right for you and sometimes that that is giving up a nine to five and starting your own business like Sonia has done. Like you've come so far and you're a much happier, better person for leaving. And it's it's great to see. Oh, thank you so much. It it really means a lot coming from a very close friend. And you're completely right. When when you are in a nine to five or when you are in, in any situation, if you are not good in yourself and you don't actually know who you are you're never going to be either your best self at work or your best self outside of work. And I think for me, maybe similar to yourself, I didn't really, I didn't really know me. And I was doing a lot of compromising um, to suit the needs of other people and, and doing a lot of conforming in an environment that just didn't serve my purpose. Your job to be self-serving. Um, so obviously you've, gro you've grown so, so much. Um, what does the Sonia Barlow look like today? Like what, if I went onto your LinkedIn now, like, what would I see? Well, why don't you tell me? <laughs> why don't Why don't I share my LinkedIn with you? And you're like, this is what I think you do. I, because, that's a great question. The reason for that is, is because I have personally optimized my LinkedIn so that when you go on my LinkedIn, you'll be able to see exactly what I do. And that's one of the key learnings when it comes to LinkedIn is you have 7.24 seconds, so less than eight seconds to make an impression. And I'm looking at you not as a friend right now, but as an individual who can, 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 you can be my client or you can be my next sponsor. You can be my next partner. You want to know what you're getting for your buck and you want to do it in eight seconds. So looking at that, what do you think? Um, like I see a lot of talking. I mean, I can see <laughs> your thumbnail. You're talking right now, <laughs> but I can see in your cover, like you're obviously speaking in your profile photo, you're speaking, 
you know, it says TEDx speaker, keynote speaker. I'm seeing in the about, again, it's speakers in there. So like looking at your profile, I'm like, okay, cool. This girl talks for a living. I wonder what she talks about. And I can see, okay, great. Um, diversity, like Digital Academy. So I'm, I'm seeing Santander, I'm seeing analytics, I'm seeing PwC. So like, okay, cool. I'm seeing delivery consultants. So. I think there's a lot I'm pulling out of it. I, I'd say that you're definitely a consultant. You're someone that is obviously an expert in their field to be doing a lot of these talks. But obviously I know you, so I'm biased, but going by what I see, I'm like, okay, she's a kind of you know top me. consultant speaker. Saying that you know me, but I know that you've never actually looked at my LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just about get you to look at my Instagram. So I know for a fact, 100%, you have never actually looked at my LinkedIn. I've not. I've not. But now I have. Exactly. So you've, you've, this is exactly why I asked the question, because you've done it from an from a objective viewpoint, right? You know me, but it doesn't mean you knew what my LinkedIn looked like. Yeah. And my first point that I want to make before we go into it is, that's because it aligns with my vision. So you need to have a vision, a mission, and a purpose or values that drive you. A vision is something tomorrow, a mission is something today, and your value drivers or your purpose is really what you want to be known for. Uh, so a really good example of being my vision is to be the go-to public speaker in the world, right? That's a massive vision, but I'm a quite an ambitious person and I will get there. You need a BHAG. But my mission then has to be really attainable in a time frame. So it's all right, well, in the next year, so 2020, my mission is to deliver 20 corporate paid workshops. It's to have another TED talk. It's to um, start writing my book. It's to upskill 1200 people. And it's to educate uh, kind of society on how to be more inclusive and intersectional. That's my mission. But how I've done that is I've split it into quarters and I've put a time frame and I've put digestible numbers next to everything. Mm -hmm. And then my purpose and my value are the buzzwords you've exactly used speaking diversity digital tech business woman mm -hmm. empowerment uh you know not for profit and i very much showcase these on the eight seconds that you're looking at yeah. so before you even start thinking about creating your personal brand or your assets i need you to think about what that personal brand looks like why does it look like that and what you really want to achieve from it so question to you what is your vision my vision okay like as cheesy as this sounds my vision is genuinely to create like harmony and actual peace like peace externally and and internally to the communities the people and the projects that i work on um like i'm not naive i'm not going to sit and be like oh well peace but that would be amazing but i me personally i i know i'm not going to be able to do that right so i want the different communities, the, the minoritized groups that I work with to be happy. And I say minoritized because you're brown, I'm black, right? Like we are not a minority. And quite frankly, I'm bored of being portrayed as a minority because we are not a minority, we've been minoritized. Um, so that's why I say that. But I want true meritocracy. So the people that I work with, the people that I upskill and help get to a better place. Like I want them to be happy and I want that success to be passed down through generations. Like I really want to build minoritized communities and kind of break social boundaries and stigmas, you know, like it's completely acceptable to be a, a single parent. You know, you can be a single mother and still be successful. I, I think there are so many different narratives that we can have that are positive that I, I want to avoid different groups being pulled down by some of those negative narratives or stigmas. So that's, that's my overall vision. That that's what I want. It's a bit airy, but that's, that's the goal. And so to your point, airy is completely fine, right? Creating this a concept of personal brand is an evolution. It does not happen overnight for most people. Most people, I would just make that really clear. Uh, obviously your Instagram was a little bit of an anomaly, but we won't <laughs> bring that in right now, but it's an evolution. So, so you start with something and you start with an idea and you play that idea out for three months and then you go back to the idea you play out for another three months. So my advice would be quarterly, you have to look at your vision, your mission, your values and make sure that 
what you have online is portraying the exact kind of person that you want to be and, yeah. and you want to be seen as, right? Your online profile and your personality is just as important as your personality and profile offline, if not more, because yeah. more people can access it. I've grown my LinkedIn from 200 followers to 7,000 in a year. My average post gets 8,000 to 12,000 views. Uh, my average post engagement is 40%. And I even have companies now messaging me asking if they could pay me to post on LinkedIn, right? Like LinkedIn influencing is real, but mm -hmm. that mean that you're, you're like, all oh, it, what did you, did you say money? Um, but that doesn't mean that that aligns with my vision or my values. And so I've now made it a point that I will not say yes to things that do not fit the purpose. Instead of saying no to them, I'll pass them on to other great uh, people in my network so I can enable opportunities for them. So your vision is to be, your, your vision is to be the go-to, um, the, the go-to kind of person who's changing the narrative for my uh, minoritized people everywhere, right? That's like the overall content. But what's your mission? Bring it back. What does Chanel want to achieve in the next, uh, six months, let's say. Okay, so I want my own brand of, um, I don't want to talk too much about it because it's still in talks, but my own brand of essentially journal slash diaries. Um, and it really is to try and help maintain um, that positive experience that I'm talking about. Um, that's, that's one of my goals. I would also like to officially set up Novosphere Society as a not-for-profit. I think there's a lot yep. going on with it and it's something I've been working on for a long time, but it's not official, you know, it's not in company house. Um, and I think the next six months is really setting the foundation and doing a lot of like admin, yep. a lot of admin for the things that I'm doing, which I have unfortunately been neglecting. Okay. Um, so I think that'll allow me to take it all to the next step. So six month future Chanel, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking six months future Chanel. Her LinkedIn, her personal brand needs to reflect charity. It mm -hmm. needs to reflect, reflect social good. It needs to reflect mindfulness and positivity. And most importantly, um, honesty. Yeah. Because that is your personal brand. And you, you showcase that very well on Instagram. But the type of content that you post on Instagram maybe will not be appreciated to the same extent on LinkedIn. Yeah. And so your content has to be different. It has to be slightly more business and professional. Mm -hmm. um, but what that means for you is if future Chanel in the next six months, so let's say, you know, sh she is the go-to person for your vision, which you, which you already enhanced, what is Chanel going to start doing today? So the first thing we have to do is, yes, we have to optimize your, your top half, which I'll talk through. But the second thing is you have to share content. You have to engage with you, with your connections on LinkedIn. So I know from, actually having checked your LinkedIn beforehand, that um, you have the connections, you just don't have the consistency. Mm -hmm. And that consistency will make a big difference because you want that consistency to bring in clients and those clients will bring in donations for your charity and your charitable cause. Yeah, I think, um, I don't think it exists yet, but perhaps so, where you can do a crossover between like Instagram and LinkedIn because like, Instagram is a full-time job like wow I had no idea how intense Instagram is um but it'd be really really useful if obviously you can do it on Twitter you can do it on Facebook but I wonder if there's that connection where I can post the same things if I choose to from Instagram to to LinkedIn that'd be really useful so there are scheduling tools have you heard of them no not for LinkedIn. Are, that sounds really useful. <laughs> yeah, there are actually social media scheduling tools. So Hootsuite, Buffer, uh, Later, um, being three of three of them. So, for example, the LMF uh, company page, we've grown that from zero to 4,000 in six months, followers. And engagement rate is around 33%. But we, um, myself and, uh, and the voluntary team, two of us sit down every Sunday and actually talk through what do the posts look like for this upcoming week. And we schedule them into the scheduler. So it takes about an hour and an hour and a half, but it means that it automates everything. But when you use such a scheduler, you can have actually the same post being posted on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, oh, Facebook, but the captions have to be different because the, yeah. um, 
the, the number of uh, kind of written text is, is obviously different. different right? So just a quick summary of what you've said. Um, optimize your top half. So relevancy, clarity. I don't know if you touched on the headline. Um, but your summary of your goals and experiences and to be consistent, to be frequent and consistent on LinkedIn. Yeah, so in summary, the first is understand what your vision, your mission, your values are. So where do you, what, what do you wanna be or who do you wanna be in the next six months, next year, next 10 years and work backwards so you have a consistent plan. The second is in relation to that optimize your top half. So make sure that when someone goes onto your LinkedIn profile, they see the relevance and the clarity in your profile the hyphens or your summary clearly states what you do, who you are. And most importantly, uh, in eight seconds, you are able to give them a good picture of the kind of individual profile that you are building. And the third thing we discussed is that consistency when posting and sharing content, it's a two way relationship. Um, and it very much is like being in a relationship with a social media platform. You have to nurture it. You have to talk to people, you have to talk to it. So, Think about posting at least uh, two to three times a week. Okay, and if, you, if you're not in a position to post manually, then we'll go and use scheduling tools that do exist so that you can automate your posting, but you can schedule them kind of every week or every two weeks to take the pressure off yourself, but still make sure that you are um, very much being consistent and clear in building your personal brand. And if you do that for three months, it will definitely work. I can guarantee that. But most importantly, after three months, you go back and you revisit your profile and, and just uh, kind of um, enhance it in the way that you, you wish is best. And then that's where the data analytics come in. But there's no point of touching that until you've been doing something for three months. Yeah. Okay, cool. That works. Are you going to do it now? Sorry? Are you going to do it now? Uh, yep. Yeah. As soon as we're off this call, I'm going to do just that. Well, that's cool. When you fix your LinkedIn, or if you think you need extra help, then um, I'll jump on it. And my kind of top tip is go on the private mode or the incognito mode in Google and Google yourself and see what comes up both under your name um, and what comes up in your LinkedIn. And also if you have a name which is more common than unique, then see where you come up in the search rankings and how you can elevate that profile so it comes up to the top. So that's a kind of bonus tip. And one thing I would say, which I found useful in the past, um, when I was, I used to be a recruiter. I used to be a recruitment consultant. And LinkedIn was huge for me as well. I've got so many connections and I used to get so many views and I was posting regularly. Um, but I've stopped using it and it's kind of dropped off. But what I found was so, so useful is looking at like, people that I admired, people that I knew in my industry that did really well. I was like, what are they saying? What articles are they posting? What are they reading? What are they doing? Who are they engaging with? Um, and that really helped me have almost like a template for what I wanted in my profile. Um, so let's say for example, now I'm, I'm, a, I'm a business psychologist, you know, Professor Peter Zabel, he's phenomenal. He's the go-to person in that space. So sometimes I'll go onto his profile, what's he reading? What's he doing? I wonder what skills and qualifications he has. Um, you know, what bodies of work is he involved in? What boards does he sit on? And that kind of gives you an idea of what you should be aspiring to. Of course, everyone's um, career plan and path is so, so different. And it kind of gives you like a rough guideline of what good looks like in your space. Because sometimes getting started is the hardest part. You know, it's, it's, it's not, it's not easy, especially when you're a graduate. What the bloody hell do you write? When I left uni, I was like, well, I've not done anything. <laughs> what, like, what have I covered? Okay, I got a 2-1. Okay, you know, what else? So it is sometimes hard to start, but once you get started, um, once you get started, it, it does kind of flow, but definitely having a good template will help. Oh, we've got more to go. <laughs> we don't. I just want to bring up on that point. We don't at all. I think that's a really good summary and, and a place where people start. I just wanted to bring up the point of when you're a graduate or when you are currently in a corporate position, but you have hobbies or side hustles, you should most definitely put them on your LinkedIn as relevant work experience. 
So as a graduate, if you are in societies, if you're doing extra work, if you're being proactive, you put that as experience and think about the skills and skills is the important word here, the skills that you've learned. Um, and if you are a business professional, you also put all your voluntary experiences or any short courses that you've done on your LinkedIn, again, as relevant work experience and focus on the skills that you've learned. Um, so it's not additional information. It's just mm. on the point that you've made. Don't think that your experience is not relevant. If anything, the, you can find relevancy in everything you do. Mm -hmm. Just again, align it to, to the skills and to the vision that you have um, and, and make it work. Yeah. Okay, I think that's, that's really useful. Um, I think this is just, I guess a brief introduction to LinkedIn. Obviously it's gonna be quite short for you guys, but let us know in the comments if you're a grad, you know, if you're already into your career and you want to change, like what in-depth videos can we give you that are going to be useful for you? Yeah. And just to kind of my last point for me is don't, don't be afraid to just give it a go. There is, you know, the worst thing that you can do is not try. And then when you do try and if it doesn't work and if it does work and that's where the analytics come in, you can always change things up. But if you're too frightened to, not give it a go right now then ultimately you are losing out on opportunity and you're losing out on momentum but going back to the first thing that we started with and Chanel very much spoke about you're losing out and really understanding who you are and yeah. and what your purpose is I fail all the time I just fail forward you know like yeah. I mean I don't I don't really even call it failing it's like it's a, it's a learning curve like you know, how many times do people fail their driving test? I wouldn't know. I've never done mine. We'll do this summer. So it's just like, if I fail the first time, I fail the first time. I'm only going to use it as a learning curve and get better the second time. Like the only time you fail is if you just give up. And that's the only time you really fail on something. Honestly, I failed so much. Um, I, I just failed so. time. Go like, on. Do be aware that sometimes not everything is for everyone. <laughs> you know like deciding to go in a different option that's not necessarily a fail that can be a win <laughs> you know there are some things that I wouldn't make a great mathematician I just wouldn't it bores me you know it'd be really stupid of me to try um and then be like oh well I've committed I have to keep going I think you know in your heart and soul what works for you um mm. the point is just don't ever give up or fail like for good like on your dreams you know, if it's something that you dream about, like you're always going to make it work. You just have to pick the right things. Like if you stick true to you, your goals, your vision, you're always going to make it. Sometimes you can deviate and think, I've done this so many times. Oh, like my friend's doing lip fillers or she owns a nail acrylic salon and she's making more money than me. Maybe I should, you know, like dip my toes in that water over there. That looks like it's warm. And it's like, that's taking away from what I'm doing. And just because someone's doing something else, that doesn't mean your goal or your path isn't going to succeed. It just means someone's succeeding over there. For me, to get my PhD and to get all of these qualifications, I'm going to be 30, you know, until I start becoming the woman that I want to be, which is essentially yeah. a lecturer. And so it's so easy for me to be like, oh no, but I want to do this or I want to do that. Like, you're only in competition with yourself. If I looked at other people's paths, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm failing. I don't have a business. I don't have this. I don't have that. But for what I want, it's going to take me longer to get there. And I think it's just so important. Stay true to you, your goals and your visions, and you can't go wrong. Yeah, no, I absolutely. I mean, I've done a whole TED talk on failing because I failed so much last year. But I was like, I might as well do a TED talk on the amount that I failed and where I am today. And, you know, ironically, I had to fail for me to get a TED talk <laughs> on failure. But that, that's just how it works. But, you know, the point being that if, if we started comparing and if we, if we started looking and uh, being competitive with each other, it's the same as you now have X amount of Instagram followers. You know, if I thought of you any different, you'd be like, well, she's different and maybe I should jump on Instagram. But that's not my forte. And. Mm -hmm. I'm trying, but it's just not but something I can LinkedIn, you're killing it. Like, you know, I'm going to definitely do my LinkedIn and get it to a good position. But my toolbox, my biggest toolbox is Instagram. Yours yeah, is exactly. Instagram isn't, isn't banging. It's, it's just not. <laughs> but you can it up a little bit. Maybe it's, it's a work in progress. 
Uh, you know, but you can help me with Instagram. That's where you skill share, and that's where. And I guess that's that's where you're the power of community and the power of having a good and circle. Having like-minded females around you. <laughs> Say it again for the people in the back. It's true though. Like, it's so important to have a strong support network. Yeah. Like, God forbid, I have a bad day. Sonia's the first to hear about it, and that makes me feel better because it's not like oh, I'm good. it's okay, Chanel, like, suck it up. You need to do this, this, and this. You know, I go to her for advice and she's like, call a lawyer. <laughs> I do this. <laughs> like, and it's so important to have those people around you. Like, that's the biggest help. And that's what I want to share with Sonia, with this community. I've got some really great people around me and we have great yeah. conversations. And it's like, do you know what? Let me have these on live. Let me have yeah. these on Zoom and record it and, and share that message because we should all have access to helpful supportive people and we'll, we'll get into this on another topic like how important your your friendship group is but like it's so important to your success it's so so important to your success um so you know like follow sonia on linkedin on instagram that there's like-minded females i think I'll, I'm, I'm this is going to be my first youtube video guys so bear with me and do they like, I don't know, there's like, you, you, can, you can put things in, in the comments, in the caption, like, I'll put your handles. Um, but bear with us. I think my communication style is just open and honest and transparent. So, mm -hmm. like, also plays at hand that I'm, I'm not good at editing. So I'm just going to upload as is. No, um, but, but again, you know, going back to that point of, yeah. we have no, this was not rehearsed. We didn't plan it beforehand. It was let's jump on and share information because that fits our purpose. It fits our vision. And it also fits in the part of, well, you don't really know what you are good at, what you're not good at and what, what you can share if you don't try. Yeah. And it's okay. This is us. Like I, it's been a win. I think it's been a win. Um, yeah. This is us like trying things out. I'll see if it gets no views. It wasn't successful. <laughs> but, um, you know, like, just get up and try. Like, do you think Jay-Z or Beyonce or, like, I, I had someone in my head and I didn't want to say it because we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> All of these really great people, like, do you think they'd be where they were today if they didn't fail? Like, you know, Destiny's Child broke up. Beyonce could have been like, oh, well, that's that. No, look at Beyonce. She's like, I'm going to do my thing on my own. Look at Barack Obama. Like, he, he, how long was it until he was president? You know, like, even Trump. Like, I don't like the man at all, but fair play to his perseverance just goes to show that hard work gets you places. You know, yeah. like, he did, at the end of the day, as much as I don't like him, he did work hard and he has been working hard. And he's not qualified. He doesn't deserve his position. But his hard work got hit for him anyway. Consistency and... He's consistently a pagan. Make, makes a difference. Um, no, I'm, I'm... Mm -hmm. There are so many people, and it's a quote that really stuck with me, like, and ha a hard-working idiot is always going to um, outdo a lazy intellect. And it's so yeah. true. Look yeah. at politics. Look at politics. <laughs> Look at where we are now. Like, and I've coasted on my intelligence for so long. I, I, I never really applied it. I never did anything with it. And it's because I was bored. And it's now I'm like, okay, what stimulates me? What is going to make me like show up and show out for myself? And that's where you need to find things that you love. Be that in a nine to five, as an entrepreneur, as a full-time mum, as a politician <laughs> you know like whatever works for you you need to find that own it make your space in it and be successful in that field you know like and having a strong linkedin presence a strong instagram presence is so important and even i'm sitting here like okay well i've got this many followers on instagram why don't i need linkedin like there are different types of people you can reach you can always reach more you can always do more so like it's our job to own our own success, to fuel that, to be at the, the, the epicenter of it and do what we can. And a good first step is making your personal brand, solidify it, get yourself out there on LinkedIn. It's like Amazon, right? If I go to Amazon and I want a phone case for my phone, I'll just type in phone case and hundreds and literally thousands of phone cases are going to come up. 
so you, we're in competition every day and that's what LinkedIn is. Like people are going to type in keynote speaker. What differentiates Sonia from the rest? Her profile, her clarity, how quick and easy her profile is. Because if I go onto one of these things on Amazon I, I, and I don't really know what the product is or I don't know anything about it, what material is it made up, how durable is it, I'm going to get bored and go on to the next thing. And it's the same with people. You're selling yourself online. Online shopping. Yeah. I, I do. You're selling yourself. I do shopping because it's just too difficult for me there's too many options but when it's when it's clear yeah, in your basically a boomer it's not a millennial problem millennials love online shopping yeah <laughs> they do love it but when you are an entrepreneur and you are trying to budget your finances it's really not your first thing that you do it should be retail therapy is a thing um well, I guess we'll have another video on like financial responsibilities because I'm not the one for that. Um, I, I, run a, I run a course now for General Assembly on um, getting financially savvy and I had to teach myself everything and now I teach people on how to be financially savvy and it's completely changed the way I look at money as well. Next video because I need that. Um, but I hope you guys have found this really useful. Oh no, I want to be a YouTuber and I forgot to, oh, I really, can, can we just add this in? Can we just add this in? Hold up. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when I did my TED talk, you know the line that I really remembered the most was the end and I was like, and my name is Sonia Barlow and this is my TED talk. Or, uh, no, I didn't say that. I was like, this, and, and um, my name is Sonia Barlow. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. That line was the one that I remembered the whole way through because I was like, don't forget it, don't forget it, don't forget it, don't That's forget cool. it. I'd love to do a TED talk. That's what I'm going to do. Good. I've done two. One of them hasn't come out yet due to technical issues, so that does happen. Um, but the second one's out. And, and yeah, of course, I mean, that was, that was the goal, right? That was one of the things that really helped elevate. And, and we, I mean, you will definitely do one. If anything, I can guarantee you in the next 12 months, if you're ready, you will do one. And of course, we'll sure. help you get ready. I'm putting that into the universe. Like, I'm, I'm doing a TED Talk in the next 12 months. Um, but I hope you guys have found that really useful. That's Luna. Luna, come here. But again, Chanel, if you want to do a TED Talk and want to be seen as a thought leader, your profile, especially on LinkedIn, needs to be on point because of the kind of industry that the... Um, that TED Talk's associated with is slightly more professional. Yeah, no, for sure. I will get on that. Um, and just quickly, what are your takeaways? Well, I should say my takeaways. What yeah, would you like to take away from this session? I would like you to go back and understand what your vision is, your mission, your values. So, i.e. what makes Chanel Chanel. Um, I would want you to, secondly, to utilise that and to use that to enhance your personal profile especially your top half of your LinkedIn and thirdly to make life easier for yourself I would like you to start using scheduling tools to schedule consistent posts on LinkedIn similar to the ones you're already doing on Instagram uh, but it means that you have to think less about the captions uh, kind of on a, on a manual and everyday basis and just put your head down every Sunday for half an hour and be like right well this is what I need to share because future chanel so you're always thinking about linkedin as your future self future chanel needs this done now so that she can achieve that ted talk that she wants yeah okay um i just want to say as well this is like a very quick overview um let us know what you would like if you want linkedin for professionals linkedin for a late career change linkedin for graduates um and sonia and i also do 45 minute LinkedIn branding where we'll go through your LinkedIn with you and help you understand the relevancy and the clarity, uh, clarity what your hyphen should be, a summary of your experience and goals, and uh, market research. We do 45 minute to hour long sessions on that. You can check the link in my bio on Instagram to, to book that. And it's almost like a hand holding session, but we equip you with tools to move forward and obviously not rely on us anymore. So I really hope you enjoyed that. Luna enjoyed it. She woke up from her nap to catch the end. So Hi Luna. Hi Sonia. Um, um, thank you. It's been great. It's been great as always talking to you, Sonia. Please do check in and make sure I've done it because you know what I'm like. I will. I will definitely make sure. You know what I'm like accountability is very important and and that's why having an accountability buddy or a good friend or 
or just someone who you're like, I, this is my challenge, make sure I've done it, is super, super, super important. Yeah. Um, but you know, in terms of the time frame, I'll give you, I'll give you kind of a week, a week or two and just drop you kind of consistent messages. And that's what accountability partners should do is just check in regularly and, and have a time frame set. Okay, great. Rightio. That's it from me, even though I've barely done any talking, which is a nice break. Um, and thank you for joining. Luna, thank you for coming as well. Um, and I will speak to you offline. Um, thank you guys for, for watching. I have been Chanel Morissette. <laughs> and I am Sonia Barlow. <laughs> <laughs> You've always got to one-up me, haven't you? <laughs> I mean, been Luna. <laughs> <laughs> Next video, I'll be like, "Welcome back to my channel." It's my first. It's my no, first really video. Really Please leave some nice messages in the comments. Don't don't um don't forget to subscribe. Is that what YouTubers say? Don't oh my to... god! Now, okay, let me do this. Thank you for coming to our YouTube video today, where we taught you the basics of LinkedIn, how you can optimize your personal brand. If you liked our content, please do subscribe and do leave comments in, um, in the bottom of the screen to tell us what you would like our next video to be. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and most definitely uh, drop us an email on our email address, which will be posted at the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Smash it, Sonia. What she said, um, I'm, I'm a little rough around the edges on this thing. Um, corporate Sonia, see? Let's be more like Sonia. <laughs> um, but it's been dope. Stay tuned. Stay blessed. Peace, love, and light to you all. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>